Chapter Two of Lyrical Ballads, 1798. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Verity Kendall. Lyrical Ballads, 1798, by Samuel Taylor Coleridge and William Wordsworth. The Foster Mother's Tale: A Dramatic Fragment. Foster Mother, I never saw the man whom you describe. Maria. "'Tis strange. He spake of you familiarly, as mine and Albert's common foster-mother. Foster-mother. Now blessings on the man, whoe'er he be, that joined your names with mine. O oh, my sweet lady, as often as I think of those dear times, when you two little ones would stand at eve on each side of my chair and make me learn all you had learnt in the day, and how to talk in gentle phrase, then bid me sing to you. Tis more like heaven to come than what has been. Maria. O oh, my dear mother, this strange man has left me, troubled with wilder fancies than the moon breeds in the love-sick maid who gazes at it, till lost in inward vision with wet eye, she gazes idly. But that entrance, mother, foster-mother, can no one hear? It is a perilous tale. Maria, no one. Foster-mother, my husband's father told it me, poor old Leone, angels rest his soul. He was a woodman and could fell and saw with lusty arm. You know that huge round beam which props the hanging wall of the old chapel? Beneath that tree, while yet it was a tree, he found a baby wrapped in mosses lined with thistle beards, and such small locks of wool as hang on brambles. Well, he brought him home and reared him at the then Lord Velez's cost, and so the babe grew up a pretty boy, a pretty boy but most unteachable, and never learned a prayer, nor told a bead, but knew the names of birds and mocked their notes, and whistled as if he were a bird himself and all autumn twas his only play to get the seeds of wild flowers and to plant them with earth and water on the stumps of trees a friar who gathered simples in the woods a grey-haired man he loved this little boy the boy loved him and when the friar taught him he soon could write with the pen and from that time lived chiefly at the convent or the castle so he became a very learned youth but oh poor wretch he read and read and read till his brain turned and ere his twentieth year he had unlawful thoughts of many things and though he prayed he never loved to pray with holy men nor in a holy place but yet his speech it was so soft and sweet the late lord velez ne'er was wearied with him and once as by the north side of the chapel they stood together chained in deep discourse the earth heaved under them with such a groan that the wall tottered and had well nigh fallen right on their heads my lord was sorely frightened a fever seized him, and he made confession of all the heretical and lawless talk which brought this judgment, so the youth was seized and cast into that hole. My husband's father sobbed like a child. It almost broke his heart, and once, as he was working in the cellar, he heard a voice distinctly, "'Twas the youth, who sung a doleful song about the green fields. How sweet it were on the lake or wild savannah to hunt for food and be a naked man, and wander up and down at liberty. He always doted on the youth and now his love grew desperate and defying death he made that cunning entrance i described and the young man escaped maria tis a sweet tale such as would lull a listening child to sleep his rosy face besoiled with unwiped tears and what became of him foster mother he went on shipboard with those bold voyagers who made discovery of golden lands leonie's younger brother went likewise and when he returned to spain he told leonie that the poor mad youth soon after they arrived in the new world in spite of his dissuasion seized a boat and all alone set sail by silent moonlight up a great river great as any sea and ne'er was heard of more but tis supposed he lived and died among the savage men end of the foster mother's tale recording by verity kendall